appreciate it. Um, we'll go ahead and get started and we will start with um, Mr. Brian Sandalo from the Chicago Sun-Times. Thanks, uh, th thanks Elizabeth, and thanks uh, Ezra for making some time this afternoon. Um, just hey, wondering Brian. what this Hi, how's it going? Before you start, uh, I missed you Saturday night. I heard you were yeah. there for a nice uh, interview, but you weren't there for mine. I was kind of, I felt slighted. Yeah, no, I had a technical problem. I was oh, on the wrong uh, Zoom link. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, sorry about that. No, um, no problem. Yeah. Um, just wanted to bust your chops a little bit. Oh, no, please go mm -hmm. ahead. I, I welcome all chop busting. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel bad about it. But um, yeah, anyway, um. Just uh, the status. I'm just wondering the status of uh, Shaq, uh, Fetty, um, Hiro, and also uh, Gaston Jimenez. Okay, so Gaston is fine. He's he's in training. Um, okay. We just have to be very cautious with him. Uh, he was starting to get a little uh, soreness in that hamstring, so we had to get him off the pitch. Uh, Shaq is possible for this weekend. Um, Fetty and, and um, Hiro would still be out. Okay, and then just to continue on the, uh, the that topic just a little bit, maybe a little different, but um, seeing the way that the attack has been in the last two games with uh, Goody uh, Gutierrez in the middle with uh, Marin and Chris Mueller, would you consider going forward with that even when Shaq is healthy? Uh, no, I think when Shaq is here, he'll play. Um, it's a, it's a good issue to have as a coach. Um, I thought. Brian has come in and played really well in the in the number ten position, um, uh, as he did uh, last year when uh, whenever Shaq was not available. But uh, I mean, uh, with the experience and the quality that Shaq brings to the to the team, uh, that, that's not something that uh, I think two games should uh, unseat him of. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, there's a little bit of respect that goes towards that also. You know, he's a very experienced, uh, very uh, the ingenuity that he brings onto the pitch. Uh, for us as a team, uh, really, really helps us. So we're 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 a much better team with Shaq than we are without. Um, but I'm happy that the team is getting better. That we're able to play uh, without a, a player like him uh, of his caliber. Uh, that shows uh, growth and some progress in what we're trying to do here and what we're trying to build. So um, uh, as long as Shaq is playing well, he'll he'll be on the pitch. Okay. And just, I don't mean to bogart this, uh, and I'll pass after this. But is there a way to fit those four on the field together? Yes, definitely. And that's something that, you know, as a coach, uh, after watching the past couple of games, you, you start thinking of ideas and ways uh, to do that. Um, but we don't want to be so uh, offensive minded that we give up um, uh, too much in the back. I'm really not happy right now with the with the way we're giving up, you know, these silly goals. So um, I have to take that into consideration while planning on, on making sure we have uh, enough attack on the pitch. But not to the point where, especially as long as Fetty is still out, uh, because what what he brings uh, as far as ball winning, ball recovery for us, without him, we have to make sure that we don't have too many guys who are just you know very good on the ball and and not have enough uh, to protect because we're not always going to have possession of the ball. So it's a it's a good problem to have. Um, I I welcome it. Um, the staff and I we're, we're very very happy the way the team's been playing the past couple of games. So uh, we're in a good situation. We just want to make sure we remain consistent. Thank you. Next, we will go with Jonathan Segal from MLSsoccer.com. Hey, Ezra, Jonathan here. I um, wanted to start with a, admittedly a non-Chicago-focused question, but we're connecting with a bunch of coaches around the league trying to get to the bottom of how on earth has St. Louis started 5-0-0? Oh no. <laughs> um, defied a lot of expectations externally to say the least. Um, what has most struck you about them as a club and whether it's identity, tactics, if you have the answer for why everyone passes it to draw Klaus right in front of goal, I'm sure people would love to hear it, but what's your perspective on what the newest team in the league has been able to accomplish? Well, it's it all comes down to execution. You know, I think they as a team, uh, Bradley have been playing very, very organized as a team. And, you know, we all get a break every now and then. I mean, against NYCFC, we got a ball played in to our striker, but we didn't uh, execute it. So their execution, when they do get those passes uh, played to, to him, uh, has been excellent. And as a team, I think they're just 
you know, it's it's a spirit amongst that team that that's very good. Uh, that's very good to see. And I know it's an expansion team and it wasn't expected, but I think he's, he's got them in a, in a good uh, frame of mind. And um, and I'm sure they take the, the added bad passes that they've been receiving. But beyond that, they, they've been playing really well. And it's a team effort. You know, it's a team effort. You, if you look at that team, yes, he's scoring goals, but there's no real superstar in the team. You know, everyone just rolls up their sleeve and fight for each other at home and on the road. So um, I'm really happy for them and what, what they have going on down there. Yeah. Obviously, I got to give you a Chicago focus one. That'd only be fair. Um, being Brian Gutierrez, he, he is finding some good form. I know Brian, uh, our colleagues asked about him briefly before, too. Um What's that U20 outlook look like for him, perhaps? There were news this morning that sounds like the U20 World Cup is no longer in Indonesia, got moved. They'll still play it sometime this summer. Um, but what is the potential for him as a talent who's, I think, showing his creative abilities every day in this league? Yeah, well, he's doing well. You know, and I'm sure the, the U20 are going to, you know, ask for his services and want his services. But, you know, first and foremost, you know, he's a Chicago Fire, you know, and uh he has to, you know, be here for us, and and uh, you know, it's a situation where uh, we have invested a lot in Brian. Uh, we want Brian to be here. Um, Brian, you know, I've, I've said from last year with, with him and Duran about the ceiling that this guy possesses, and uh, I like the way he's developing. But right now, his focus needs to be with the fire, and he's going to get games uh, with us, a lot of games, and he's going to continue to develop. So I think right now, being with us is best for him. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, we will go with Alex Calabresi from Men in Red, 97. Hey, Ezra. Hope you're doing well. I hate to say my question is similar to the previous two, uh, but uh, Guti's been very, very good as number 10. Last three matches, he's played there. Nine goals for the team. He's been involved in eight of them. Is putting Shakiri on the wing like he plays for the national team something you'd even consider, or would you just eliminate that possibility to get Guti in his best role? Well, we can't give up too many tactics here <laughs> to whoever's listed, but, you know, it's a possibility. Uh, but uh, right now, you know, we are just happy that, you know, the team is playing well. Um, we're doing the things that we need to do to finally put the ball in the back of the net. Um, and, and we're just going to continue in that way. Um, once shot gets back, we'll we'll determine what's the best way to move forward. What I will say about Brian Gutierrez is, if you look at that game against Cincy, um, at 3-1, there are a couple of times where we get on the break, he's going in on goal, and he missed once Casper, another time he missed uh, Marlon, Marlon uh, Selassie, and maybe once um, Chris Mueller. And we talked about that. We have a, a reflection uh, video we sit down and talk about that on the Tuesday following that. And that was brought up in the meeting. The clips were shown to him where just being more aware, you know, just being more efficient in that final third to maybe slip that ball to that open guy rather than trying to dribble three guys. And he was found in that similar situation on two different occasions in Miami, and he made the right choice. And to me, that shows me a player that's developing not just physically, but developing mentally as far as what he's thinking, his vision of the game. Um, and so that's good because sometimes you tell young players, you, you show them clips and, and things that they could do differently and they go out and they find themselves in the same situation and nothing changes. So it was good for me as a coach to see uh, that bit of uh, development in just a short week span where he can go from missing out to putting us up, putting us up 4-1 and putting that game away to now getting that opportunity and not thinking self, thinking what's the best decision for the team at this moment. First, it was sl slipping it back post to Chris, and then it was slipping it uh, again to Kai Kamara for the, for the game winner. So I'm, I'm very happy overall with what Brian is doing, and I hope he continues to develop like that uh, uh, for us and for himself. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Anand Basic from Vavil. Hello, thank you both again for this. Uh, a quick one to start. Is there any update on Kutsias and when he'll be available? Yes, um, I'm expecting him anytime soon, uh, possibly the last latter end of this week. Um, but I don't have an exact date or anything 
Um, I know he finished his last U19 game uh, earlier this week, so we're expecting him uh, sometime soon. But I, I don't have a timeline as an exact date. Got it. Thank you. And then the team still won the game, but you did blow yet another lead beforehand. How much of a concern is that for you? Very much. Uh, and it's not even so much the blowing of the lead. Um, it's the, the type of goals that we're, we're letting out. You know, we're a team that pride ourselves on being very organized and, and, and making it very difficult to score. And so we're not teams are not playing through us, uh, dribbling us uh, in the back and putting the ball in the back of the net. It's, it's, it's simple. You know, little crosses, back posts that we're missing. Um, it's it's not clearing a free kick. Uh, it's things like this that you know we need to really, really be better at. You know because yes, we worked a lot on the attacking part of things in the off season, and we're seeing that uh, uh, that benefited us. But also, we need to make sure we get back to uh, keeping teams at zero because it makes it so much easier for us to play when we don't give up those soft goals. And I thought. That goal, it was so untimely at the end of the first half in Miami. It was just a bad goal to give up. Um, what, 30 seconds or so to go in the second in the first half, which kind of gave them momentum. You know, we talked about it at halftime and tried to regroup a little bit because that could really, especially on the road, you know, spiral you downwards. But uh, and then they come out and then they get a second goal, which was again a back post, just a missed mark. Um, but you know, you, you have to also look at the positives, you know. It's at home. We knew they would come out. We knew they would try to uh, tie the game, which they did, but we never gave up. Uh, we made some switches, made some changes to make sure that, you know, we come away with points. Uh, and when the opportunity presented itself to take all three, uh, to do that. And I'm very happy that we did that. So I was happy for the boys in the end that we were able to finish out that game uh, differently than we did against Cincy. But just the, the type of goals that we're giving up, you know, if teams were, you know, made, completing 15, 20 passes and putting in the back of our net, you know, I, I'd raise my hand and say, you know what, we need to revamp this whole way of defending. But it's not that. It's it's that five-second lack of uh, focus, concentration that's putting us in these situations. So hopefully that's out of our system now and it's, you know, you get the lead and you stay ahead and don't let teams back in because it's, it's, it's very uh, troublesome when it happens like that. Thank you. Thank you. And we will go last question with Joe Chats from On Tap Sports. Hi, Ezra. I hope you've thought out from practice today. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, one, one. It's kind of cold out there. Yes, yes. Not Miami. Not Miami at all. I'm Caribbean, um, so it's going to take a while for me to thaw out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't have to this year. Uh, in terms of with the MLS next uh, pro season kicking off, what is the message to the first team players when you have them go play for Chicago Fire 2? There was a sizable group uh, on Sunday playing. I know Kendall, he ended up playing 30 and then 45 the next day. So what's the message to those guys when they are sent to that team? That you're constantly being evaluated. Um, you're on a first team contract, but this second team is here for guys who don't get much minutes, uh, who doesn't play in the game to to get minutes so that you stay, uh, you know, physically fit um, and you stay sharp. Um, so uh, the message to them is it's not a kickabout. It's not for you to go down and and just, eh, it's second team. No, it's for you to go and stand out. You know, right? you're, you're on a first team contract. We need players when they go, whether you're coming back from injury or not, to stand out in those games because we're watching the games. As a staff, we're watching the games and you're being evaluated because we need to know that we can trust you to put you on the pitch in a first team game. And if you're not playing much, uh, if you're not playing at all on the first team, it's the only way for us to see you in a game is with uh, the second team. Uh, yes, practice helps. You have to do well in practice also, but uh, getting you in game situation, getting game minutes is how you stay sharp so that when you do step onto the first team pitch, that you're not lagging behind or it's not a big drop off for us. So that's that's the message there when those guys go. And, you know, all of our guys, you know, um, when asked uh, to do it because they had to stay over, even the guys who traveled with the first team had to stay over and play the next day, were willing to do it. So we have a good uh, group of guys, especially, you know, so many young guys. Um, and they, they were, they're all willing to do it because they all know that that's part of their development, you know, being able to play in games. And if you're not getting with the first team, 
you have to get it with the second team. Thank you. Did it, did you have to really pull any of their arms to uh, get them to spend an extra night in Miami? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Ezra. Uh -huh. Thanks, E. Thank you. Thank you, Coach, for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. You can raise your hands again. We'll be back shortly with Martin Haile Selassie. Thanks, guys. from the Chicago Sun-Times. Sure. Uh, hey, thanks uh, so much for making some time uh, this afternoon. Uh, we all really appreciate it. And uh, just wondering, it seems just four games in, you've made a pretty smooth transition from Lugano over to uh, the fire. How have you done that? Yeah, it's been four games, uh, and three of those I played. So, um, yeah. I had a preseason which was not uh, very easy. I had uh, an injury which I had to deal with, so it took me some time to to get on the pitch. But uh, I feel like uh, I adjusted really, really well and really quickly. Also, the guys made it uh, easy for me. So yeah, I feel good, and uh, I hope we can continue like that. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Alex Calabresi from Men in Red ninety seven. Hey, Marin. Hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to ask you, you, like like Brian said, you made a relatively quick transition from the Swiss Super League to MLS. What differences have there been both on the training field in terms of the environment in Chicago and on the field of play in MLS from the Swiss Super League? Yeah, so I heard uh, before I came, I heard some things about uh, MLS as well. Also, when uh, Shaq was training with us in Lugano, he told me some things. Um, yeah. I can uh, I can just uh, say say that it it was uh, true what he told me because it's uh, it's really nice here in MLS. Everything is bigger than uh, than in Switzerland, obviously. The um, the games I would say is maybe more physical. You know, it's going more back and forth, running a lot, and uh, strong guys. Which uh, but in Switzerland it's more uh, probably tactical and technical. But yeah, I feel like I adjusted really well and. Uh, but I feel like I have still room to improve, you know, and uh, I want to give my all every day, every weekend. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Adnan Basic from Vavo. 
Thank you again. Hope you're doing well. Branching off of those questions, what sort of feedback have you been getting from Ezra and the other coaches during the week in training? Yeah, obviously we we spoke about the last game and then uh, we, we had a good analyze. We analyzed the games because it was uh, obviously we won, which was uh, very good at the end, but uh, we had also some things to improve. We worked on that today in the training too. Um, yeah, we now we are preparing the next game and um, I hope we're going to be good prepared and uh, to, to keep the three points at home because uh, it's a good chance now for us, good opportunity because we have uh, three games in a row at home. So the maximum, maximum amount of points is, uh, is the goal. Thank you. Next, um, we'll go with Joe Chats from ONTAP Sports. Hey, Marin. Hope all is going well. I was wondering, uh, how important is it to you in terms of your success thus far? You, I know you spoke after the NYCFC match of how much you were hampered by that injury during preseason. In terms of being able to be yourself in training and on the pitch, have you, is that really changed since you've been able to go full go? Yeah, it was. It was probably my my first injury, with less, which lasted a little bit longer. So uh, it was a new situation for me. But uh, we knew it was. Uh, we were always in uh, in talks with the medical staff. We we knew that uh, we have some time because the preseason was uh, really long. So um, we took our time to really recover well. And then uh, obviously I needed uh, one two weeks in training. And then uh, after that I was. Uh, 100% back in the team and uh, yeah I hope uh, to get uh, even better day by day week by week and then uh, we're gonna see and lastly were you, was there frustration that you felt at that time and how did you get through that um I would not say frustration because it's uh if you would choose to have uh, an injury during a season it would probably be in the in the preseason you know Mm -hmm. So I knew that I had uh, had some time. So I took my time. I didn't want to stress me out because uh, I didn't want to see the medical guys again, you know, after uh, <laughs> some weeks. So um, we took our time and uh, I was relaxed about that. We, we knew the schedule. So at the end, it came really good. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we will go with Hernán Espinosa from La Fiera Deportiva. Hey, Marin, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I have the chance to ask uh, one of the players who mm -hmm. was the most impressive player that he saw on the field. He mentioned your name. So during these uh, games that you were playing with the fire, who is the person that you were more impressed with to play with and uh, the ones that you like, uh, you have seen in the team? And also, uh, my other question is, uh, uh, what do you think about the young players that this team has? Uh, they are uh, making this team uh, younger and younger. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um... Since the first training, I saw that we have a lot of uh, talented guys, you know, and uh, good players. Um, it's it's hard for me to name some players, but uh, obviously all the the people that I'm in direct relation with on the pitch are really good players. Um, and uh, I hope we can uh, continue to show that on the pitch because that's the most important. And uh, in terms of the young guys, um, yeah, it's uh, they are talented, you know, but uh, they know that they have to work because uh, one thing is to be a pro and to have a pro, pro contract, but the next next thing is to to really you know to break through and to have minutes and to leave your to leave your mark in the in the team. So I think they know that they have to keep working and keep uh, being focused, and then uh, it's gonna come good. And one more question: uh, If what is your natural position? And where is you uh, you like to play the most in your professional career? Thank you. Yeah, so I would say I'm a winger who can um, play on both sides, left or right. Uh, obviously, nowadays, when you ask uh, right-footed wingers, they would say that they would prefer to play on the left, you know, to, to cut inside, to have uh, some options. But uh, I can play comfortably on uh, on both sides. So 
wherever the coach thinks it's the best for the team, I play there. Thank you. Brian, I see your hand is still up. Do you have another question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint you for that, E. But um, <laughs> um, just uh, wondering, I know it hasn't been too much time yet, but you, Brian Gutierrez, and Chris Mueller seem like you've really formed a nice little uh, you know, connection uh, as the three attacking mids. Um, why do you think that is? And why do you think that your three styles really complement each other well? Yeah, and in, in the last game, you could see that we had uh, some good connection, you know. But uh, it's it's still building, you know. Every day in the training, we are still uh, training, uh, whether it's tactics, techniques, and uh, finishing. So we still have to improve the the connections. But uh, obviously, when you have good players on the pitch, the transition is easier to get to know each other uh, quickly, you know. So I feel like um, with these guys, we understand each other pretty well. And then, uh, of course, you can't forget uh, Shaq, which is. Uh, in in moment not uh, available, but uh, when he's coming back, then I'm looking forward also to play with him because uh, he's a great player too. Martin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining the call. Have a good day. Thank you.